All right, guys, today we are going to be responding to some of the biggest critic messages that I get on my YouTube channel on a regular basis. Now, please let me just say this before I jump into a bunch of comments. I'm not responding to the haters or letting them get to me because I'll be honest with you guys, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm very comfortable with my style of trading. I'm very used to drawdowns. I'm very used to losing streaks. I'm very used to winning streaks. I have been around the block for a while and I can say at this point, I am a trading veteran. I've seen good markets markets, bad markets, good times, bad times, good performance, bad performance. I feel like I've seen a lot of it. Now with these comments, these comments are very, very consistently similar over the time of my YouTube channel. Like I said, I've seen people come and go to my YouTube channel for years now uh, while I've just continued to trade and do my thing. So I'm not, not uh, you know, letting these people hurt my ego or anything. Like I'm fine. Please don't worry about it. I always get the comments, Nick, don't worry about the haters. I'm not worrying about them. What I'm going to try and do is respond accordingly to some of these people and some of the regular criticisms that I get on my channel. So let's take a look. Sondra says, yeah, your style is outdated. You om you lose almost every trade you take, and when you win, your wins are minimal. Once again, Nick, I don't understand why you refuse to apply smart money concepts when what you are doing clearly doesn't work. You always justify your losses by, it's just the process. Well, yes, but you are consistently losing trades left and right. I read that quote for quote because I don't want to sort of uh, undermine anything people are saying to me because there are some fair criticisms that we're going to look at today. So to respond to Sonder and people who may also wonder, Nick, why don't you use smart money concepts? Here's the thing. I have been doing what I've been doing. And this is something that nobody else can in the world can tell me to stop doing this. And you should do the same thing. You should think the same way. Okay. I have been doing what I've been doing for a very long time. In fact, I've even recorded trading performance and shown it publicly for a while too. Since 2020, I've been trading this account uh, that, I've, that I've showed publicly. There are times where things are great and there are things times where things are not great. Look at this losing streak. I went from 54% gains to at one point down to 24% gains. That's a massive drawdown overall. Now, I have been doing this long enough to know that if I stick to my system and I stick to what works for me, things will be good in the end. For those of you guys who are SMC traders or smart money, uh, smart money concepts, for those of you guys who don't know what that is, ICT is somebody that I have spoken with. He's one of the pioneering thought leaders when it comes to smart money concepts. And him and I were on the same page with people can make money many different ways, not just with SMC. I don't use them. They're for me. They're a bit complicated for what I like to do. I stick to very simple stuff when it comes to technicals and leave most of my analysis to the fundamental and sentiment analysis side of the markets. That's my style. That's what I've been doing for a long time. And I've been able to prove to myself, which is all that matters, that in the long term, this is very likely going to continue to be what is going to work for me. If I was to go switch off something that's working just to go use someone else's method that apparently is so much better than my own, maybe it is. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying for me, there's no point. I do what works for me. It's been working to my standards very, very well. I'm not trying to claim that I am the best trader in the whole wide world. I do continuously make improvements to my style of trading and incorporating new things that I can slightly improve my edge on. For example, when 2020 hit and we had volatility expand, I had to really rethink some things with the level of volatility we were trading on. That's another story for another video. Let's go take a look at the next one. By the way, I just want to cut in here for a second. If you guys want to join our Discord, we have a Discord linked down below. We'll put it in the pinned comment section for you guys. So if you would like to join our Discord, we share trade ideas throughout the week. We also share videos and free PDF downloads on how to build a trading strategy and technical analysis strategies that work for us and things like that. If you would like those things and access to them, get them all inside of our Discord. The link is pinned down below uh, in the comment section. Your style is so basic, brother. I feel like you would benefit from incorporating more supply and demand. Just my opinion. Thank you again for your opinion. I'm not here to like fight people or get upset with anybody. These comments are some genuinely good questions and observations. Why don't I use more supply and demand? I feel like I kind of do. Most of my technical analysis is based on simple uh, market structure, supply and demand or support and resistance. I kind of use them interchangeably. That's what's worked for me for the time that I've been trading the last six years. I look for levels of key support and resistance and I combine that with a fundamental bias by looking at things like interest rate hikes, You know, what's the Fed up to? Are we in a risk on cycle? Are we in a risk off cycle? Um, things like that. Next up, we'll take a look at uh, 
Etienne's comment. He said, you are the worst trader ever. You are the best trader ever. And what is the value of these two statements? It has no value. Great, great comment. I really like that. That's why I screenshot it and put it in this video. He makes a great point. Here's the thing. If you evaluate yourself as a trader only by comparing yourself to other traders, it's going to be really hard to make it in the end. Let me tell you right now. Because if you're sitting there and you're like, I'm not yet a profitable trader. And I know a lot of you guys who are watching the channel, you're still working towards becoming profitable. If you're not yet profitable, of course you're going to beat yourself all the time up. If all you're doing is comparing yourself to traders who are already further along in their journey and making profit. I don't want you guys to compare yourself to me. And I don't want to compare myself to other traders or other people on YouTube or successful traders, unsuccessful traders. There's no value in that because genuinely at the end of the day, when you are looking in your own trading account at your own profit and loss, what matters the most is what you can do to improve against yourself, not compared to other people. So great point from Etienne. Thank you for the comment. Next one is Rudolph says, if you have been trading for years and only average 2% per month, there is something wrong with your strategy. Like Nick, Nick is honest, but the comments are honest as well. Uh, how is, but the comments are, Nick is bad at trading and he must reset everything he knows. He shows his MyFX book and it is pretty bad with 2% monthly. That is similar to one trade a month. Nick makes his money off his VIP and that is an honest comment. That is the truth. I've seen his trades on Discord. It needs a lot of improvement. Okay, Rudolph. So Rudolph coming hard on me. So uh, here's the thing. He has a couple comments in here that we got to unpack piece by piece. Number one, 2% um, per month. If you're able to do that consistently for a long period of time, let me tell you something. If you are able to do, and this is unpopular opinion stuff that I've said on my channel so many times, but it doesn't matter how many times I say it because I have to constantly, I'm in this role of trying to be an honest trader on YouTube. I constantly have to deconstruct the expectations of new traders compared to the realities of what real traders actually end up doing. Consistently profitable traders, every single one that I've ever met Ever. And I've met a lot. Look, I have 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. I have had the fortune and the luxury of meeting so many traders in interviews, conversations. Um, the ones that show performance usually average 2 to 5% average per month gains. The way I said it just a second ago, I have to deconstruct and myself and other honest traders uh, out there, other great content creators on YouTube will do the same. They will deconstruct that logic of, you know, oh, you should be making 20% a month or 10% a month. Sure, maybe if you're gambling with a small account, if, if that's what you're out there trying to do, then perhaps you can make better returns, but it could all come crashing down and you could lose 100% of your account value at any given moment if you are trading irresponsibly. For me, personally, again, not comparing myself to other traders, if I can make 2% average returns month over month, Given my personal situation, and all of you guys have to make your own decision on this at home, if I can do that in my own personal situation, to me, that's an excellent return. And if I push it much for, further than that, if I try and go for 10% average month, I might be able to do that for a while, but I also rise, raise the risk of me blowing 100% of my account at some point, which is not something that I ever want to do. I'm trying to do this for the long term, trying to do this for 30, 40 years from now. Hopefully you guys will still be seeing some videos from me. That would be wild. But you know, I, I'm trying to do this for the very, very long term. I don't need big re percentage returns every month. And I know every single successful trader that I have ever spoken with has always gone for an average of around 2 to 5% monthly. Again, deconstructing the fall reality that we are sold on social media and trying to talk about the realities of Forex is not a popular place to be on YouTube because people don't like to hear the truth. They like to hear the lie. The lie feels better, right? It's more exciting. I, and I'm there with you. When I was new to this stuff, if somebody said two to two to five percent per month to me, I'd be like, that's a waste of time. I'm not doing that. Years later, I realized how difficult the swings of the market are, right? Good times, bad times, ups and downs in the market. If you can come out on top by two to 5% per month and do that consistently, you will do very well in the long term. And that's what matters to me and to many other successful traders out there. So that's my personal opinion. Hate me for it. If you don't like me for it, um, then I then I respect that. I, I you know hope, I wish you the best for, for going for bigger returns out there, but please be careful and please don't over leverage and over risk because you will probably regret that later. Um, 
and I'm not trying to sound condescending. I like literally in this video, I'm trying to give you guys 100% reality truth of my experience. I've been doing this for a long time. And with it, I've learned some hard lessons as many traders, all traders will within their time. So, you know, it's a uh, 2% to me, if I can do that consistently over time, that's an excellent return and compounding that will do very, very well in the long term. Okay, oh, also the second half of this, um, Nick makes his money on VIP and that is an honest comment. Yeah, I do make good money from our services, uh, but I run a company that requires like 60 hours of work each week. We make videos uh, and, and 60 hours is on the low end, really. That's not even including my trading and other things that I do. Um, it's a, it's a massive, massive job to create a community for traders and I'm not complaining because I love doing it. I've met so many traders from around the world. That's like our network. That's how we've, we've grown into this community online, both on my YouTube channel and our secondary channel, A1 Trading, where we focus on market coverage, creating the news for Forex traders. We try to bring on guests all the time to bring free entertainment and value to traders. Yes, we do make money from all of that, uh, but it is not like it's an easy, you know, venture. It is a, a team of people. We have, um, I think, total about nine people that make all of this stuff possible. So it's a it's a job. Honestly, I don't know that I'll do it forever because, of course, I love trading and I make money trading, and I and I love doing the business side of it and and understanding that both are a massive amount of work is just the truth of it. We make money on both, and both of them are a tremendous amount of work. Okay, next one is, this is not a real account, this is paper trading. So what I do when I take my trades is I don't use MetaTrader. I do, every trade that I show you guys is a real trade. I don't fake accounts, I don't create fake stuff. And of course, don't take my word for it. Here's two reasons why you should, uh, why you should trust that what I show you is real. Actually, three reasons. Number one, they're not the flashiest numbers in the world. What I'm showing you is not like I'm making 30K a day or anything like that. Like I'm not showing you ridiculous numbers. Number two, when I show you guys accounts on my trading videos, they're on tradingview.com. And when you're using tradingview.com, uh, tradingview.com has like a, clod, a closed um, uh, internal server and all that sort of stuff. I'm not super network savvy, but I am a, I am a background in programming. And MetaTrader can be faked. Uh, we've, we've talked about this on the channel. I've done some videos. Maybe we'll pop up a link if you'd like to watch that video now in the top right hand of your screen. You should see that video. But um, TradingView, alternatively, is not open source like MetaTrader. MetaTrader, you can actually program in. You can make your own fake servers in MetaTrader and manipulate and fake profits. But when you're working on TradingView.com, it's not something that you get access to their code and you can manipulate or anything like that. TradingView.com is integrated with a select number uh, of, of brokers and I use Oanda, which is a regulated US broker. They would not fake stuff because it would be not worth uh, you know, a, $300, uh, a $300 million lawsuit for uh, false advertising or, or unverified profits or anything like that. They don't do any of the sketchy stuff. Oanda is regulated by the US government and um, generally speaking, if you're working with super regulated brokers like that, yes, there are some downsides, like you can't get as much leverage and you know, that sort of thing. But the upsides are that they are trustworthy. Your money is backed by the US government. If you're in the US, that's why I trade with Oanda's because I'm working with capital size where it's, I can't have my funds like in question. You know, I have to be able to get that account, uh, pull the money out of it. And some of the offshore brokers, you just never know. They can be a bit sketchy, especially if they're unregulated. Anyways, on to the next one. Um, how to trade false breakouts like a pro? Answer, widen your stop. What a clown. So this one was a little bit more just, I don't know, tongue in cheek. Uh, Paul, <laughs> Paul says, uh, he simplified my video recently that I made about false breakouts, said uh, that my whole video could have been summed up with widen your stops, what a clown. What I did make in that point, and to, to Paul's credit, I did sort of in the video discuss ways to avoid, first of all, avoid getting stopped out so easily on false breakouts. The biggest way that I personally do that is make sure that my stop loss is wide enough to account for average true range or the normal level of volatility that we would see in a given time frame. Whether you're trading the one hour, the four hour, the 15 minute chart, it's important to know on average how much price uh, or pips per bar uh, is, is normal and what to be expected and to widen your stop among that. That's the, I guess, the medium length answer. Um, and then I responded like a like a total jerk. I said, you've got any uh, birthday parties coming up? I'm looking for some more clown gigs. I need the money, insinuating that. On the weekend, I'm totally, 
<laughs> not a clown, man. It, but if uh, if you need uh, down below in the description, if you need any clown services, send in yeah, I'm the clown. clown. Burp, burp. <laughs> uh, anyways, next one we'll take a look at is going to be. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. You, uh, you have to be kidding. Uh, so all the purpose of that was to say that we have to put the stop loss further. Nick, I know you keep things simple, but this is too much. How to trade false breakouts like a pro. Yep, just put your stop loss further down, YouTuber man. And so this one, actually wait, are these guys, man, what's up with the Pauls today? Look, Paul Elago and Paul Orlandi. Hi Paul. Hi Paul. Did not like my video on stop loss placement when it comes to avoiding false breakouts or trading false breakouts. Part two of that video, by the way, was actually if you're, so once you learn how to sort of widen your stop enough to account for a normal volatility to avoid getting stopped out, the second part was to look for uh, attempts to run stops and then looking to potentially trade the other direction, trade that liquidity grab as some of the SM3 traders would uh, call it. And so if they watched the full video, they would have seen part two, which was actually how to place trades once you see stop hunts or false breakouts occur in the market. Um, so yeah, just to, to answer or to respond to this, um, I do try and keep it simple in my videos, understanding that a lot of my audience is very, very new to trading. I try and do my best to keep it relatable to a wider range of people, because I know that with these videos, I have some people who are more advanced and I have some people who are more beginner. So I do try and answer the first, or, or portion out the video to make it very simple for newbies. So um, if you ever feel frustrated with my videos, like they're too simple, I apologize. Maybe I could put together some playlists in the future that are like, uh, I don't know, more um, distinguished by skill level. I'm not sure. Uh, but I said I gave my honest take on the subject and explained it the best I could. Sorry, it didn't meet your expectations. I am indeed a YouTuber. That is correct. And this is the common one that I get. A lot of times people will accuse me of being a YouTuber or you know that we make money from selling our software and point out the obvious as if, as if we don't already know that we do that. And that, um, you know, that always is a weird one to me because people would be like, oh, Nick, you're just a YouTuber. And I'm like, well, yes, I actually love being a YouTuber. I love making videos. I've made videos my whole life. I've loved doing that. Uh, I I've loved speaking my entire life. And it just so happens that I also love trading and I've combined both where I love to speak and meet other traders like we've done on YouTube here. Uh, I love to, you know, uh, interact with people, to learn amongst people. Although trading is sort of a solo thing, trading can be incredibly boring. When I first quit my job, um, I really, really did not like working alone. And part of the reason that I started my business and expanded my business was because I was not happy living in a one bedroom apartment by myself and just trading and and making a couple of videos on the side. I did not like that. So that's why we, we got the office. That's why we started building into a bigger business and trying to create a, a media group around trading and, and get more people involved and do bigger projects is because, of course, we make money doing that, but also because that's what I love to do. I love to create things and being a YouTuber is an excellent outlet for me and I would encourage anybody who likes making videos to give it a try. Even if you get 10 people to view, I promise it's it's worth it. It feels amazing. There was a long time where I would get like three or four people in my YouTube live streams and it was such a blast. I remember doing that in college and just loving the, the ability to be like, you might be on the other side of the planet right now, but we're looking at the charts together and we're conquering this stuff together. Like, that's what I love about being a YouTuber. Regardless of the money, I just love sharing my thoughts and ideas with other people and meeting people all over the world. I, have, I can now say I've got friends in all corners of the world and that's something that Hey man, that's just cool. Anyways, um, let's move on to the next one. Joseph with, with a positive message. Shout out to Joseph. Joseph is a, a regular viewer and one of our live stream guests and he's awesome. He um, He's dropped us some donations to help support the streams and uh, I appreciate it a lot. Joseph says, don't worry, Nick, haters everywhere, but there's still a lot of people to support you. Enjoy your weekend and let's lose again next week. Dang, that's pretty good. So just a little bit of context when I'm making this video. I've been on a losing streak. In fact, if I show you guys my trading performance, if you were only looking at my trading performance recently, you would probably make the assumption, or not. I'm not gonna assume that you would make this assumption, but it would be fair for a lot of people to be like, wow, this guy just seems to be bleeding money and everything he touches is a loser. And here's the thing. If you look in the short term at anybody's trading performance, you can very easily like, convince yourself that, oh, they're a bad trader or vice versa. If you were only looking during this time, you'd say, wow, what an excellent trader. Or during this time, things just looked amazing. 
the the guarantee in trading, the one guarantee I can give you guys as a trader is that you are guaranteed to experience uh, losing streaks and hardships in your trading. If you are out there and you are struggling and you're working towards this and you related to any of the things that I brought up today or spoke about, I just wanna encourage you to keep going, keep testing your strategies, keep back testing, and remember, don't let that internal voice, or in my case, the external voices, people commenting against you, don't let it stop you from doing what's working for you and continue to make improvements. And number one thing, remember, it's about you versus you, not about you versus the haters. And I don't want to, you know, just dis, uh, you know, dismiss all these people's comments as just haters. But what I will say is that people who sort of challenge you, don't let them get into your space. And and this might be, in, in you guys' case at home, it may not be commenters on YouTube, but it might be your cousin, it might be your brother, it might be your friend who says trading's a waste of time. Your parents might say trading is a waste of your time. There's a lot of people along the way that will tell you that it's stupid and that it's pointless, but trust me, if you can weather the storm and learn to, to not only deal with your own emotions, but also the external uh, punches that are gonna get thrown your way, you're gonna be better off in the end. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this was a bit of a different video for me, but I enjoyed uh, going through it with you guys. And with that said, signing off, see you next time. Looks like it's time for your next trading video. Check out the videos here and here for more free trading content that should help you in your trading journey. We try and keep it real here, so make sure to subscribe for more content that is down to earth, realistic Forex trading content. See you in the next video.